welcome to Oops! Outrageous, overwhelming possibilities to spread contagious joy. And I tell you what, got some joy here today. <laughs> My friend Daryl Flatchley, and we're going to be talking in just a minute about some wonderful things about kids and all sorts of things that yeah. treasures. <laughs> but I just wanted to read a little bit out of the Word of God. We've been studying Daniel, and I'll tell you what, it's been incredible. But one of the things that we uh, were studying about is the fact that God alone is the one that can do everything in our hearts. And it says in Psalm 62, For God alone my soul waits in silence. From him comes salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation, my defense and my fortress. I shall not be greatly moved. How long, let's see, uh, my soul wait only upon God and silently, silently submit to him for my hope and expectation are from him. He only is my rock and my salvation, and he only is my defense and my fortress. I shall not be moved. With God rests my salvation and my glory. He is my rock of unyielding strength and impenetrable hardness, and my refuge is in God. And I just thought, Daryl, as we're talking, you found that out throughout your lifetime, haven't you, that God has been, God alone has been with you because you started wow, you know, kind you, of alone. <laughs> that's right. You know, when I was uh, four, almost five years old, my family went through a divorce and uh, I lived in a series of foster homes and things that should not necessarily happen to a child. But then at the age of, like I said, almost five years old, my two siblings and I were adopted by a former paratrooper who also was a minister of the gospel. Wow. And life got rather interesting <laughs> after that. So you mentioned to me that when you came on the scene with this minister, that there you brought some baggage with you. Oh man, <laughs> uh, you know, a five-year-old or, a, you know, if you lived in an environment that uh, was not necessarily so healthy, mm -hmm. Lying was a part of my life. Stealing. Really? Um, even at that young Even age. that young, even vocabulary. I was quick to pick up vocabulary of negative wow. sources. <laughs> and um, so I went into this family and I, my older brother from a different family, he had been praying for siblings or brothers and sisters that he could have. And we were the answer, but I really don't think I was <laughs> quite the answer to his prayer that he was expecting. <laughs> and uh, I remember, man, I, 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 broke, I broke windows. And um, there were, I, I, you know, I, I even burned the church down. Now, I heard something about that. Uh, yeah, it was now, a did secret. Did anybody ever know that? No, 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 no. I tell you, <laughs> you see, I, 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 I love playing with fire. It's, I'm sure that many kids <laughs> at different times have had this problem and adults as well. But uh, it started like this, okay? I remember one day. <laughs> I was. I also had a, a childhood problem that was never diagnosed. Uh -huh. It was called ADHD. Mm -hmm. They've since then dis diagnosed what it is. Mm -hmm. But back in those days, I just described it. They would refer to me as things like, "Well, your middle name is Trouble," you know. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> so, this former par paratrooper who is the pastor and now my dad um, had to do some major corporal punishment <laughs> in order to kind of straighten out some of those kinks. I remember one day running through the house and uh, shouting, fire, 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 and I was just having fun. Only my mom didn't think that was appropriate. She <laughs> ran and grabbed the spanking stick. Now, I wasn't really afraid of that because she would never use it. She always left that to dad to do. I was worried about that part of it. But then she, she told me, she said, don't you ever do that because one day there might really be a fire and you'll be shouting fire, fire, and nobody will believe you. They'll just say it's Daryl, you know, like the little boy that cried wolf. And I said, okay, mom, okay, mom. And, and so I quickly, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know, I was just joking, just, and, and so the next week, <laughs> I'm downstairs in the church where my brother and I had our bedroom and downstairs in basements of old churches in those days were very dark the window, mm -hmm. and I was at the very end of it and next to the women's ministry room where they collected all kinds of you know the silk flowers mm -hmm. yeah. styrofoam and things that they had accumulated since Noah's Ark yes <laughs> all right and I'm, I'm, I'm lighting candles, and of course I always made sh make sure the coast is clear and I've got the candles and the matches, oh and I am having fun. 
Well, I thought I heard my mom coming, to, coming down the stairs, so I quickly <laughs> blew everything out, uh -huh. ran over to my bedroom, jumped in the bunk bed and reading my Zane Grey Western novel. <laughs> the next thing I, huh, you know, it's just, I, just my imagination. Yeah. You know, the Bible says the wicked right. flee and nobody's chasing them. Well, that was the situation. So I, I went back over to where I'd been burning stuff, make sure it was all put away. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to get in trouble with the, you know, the candles mm -hmm. and matches still left laying out. But the curtains in the WM room was just blazing oh, to the no. ceiling, and there was nothing I could do. I mean, I looked at it really quick, and I'd like trying to think, what can I do? What can I do? And there was nothing. So I went running up the stairs, screaming to the top of my lungs, fire, fire, fire! And my mom, she runs over to the spanker stick, grabs it again, and she says, I warned you! And I said, no, 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 it really is. And, and somehow, you know, as, as I, I, she believes me, and she follows me downstairs, and the church is on fire. It quickly caught all that, you know, all that stuff that the WMs, and it, it just took off. And so, called the fire department, and they were there within about five minutes, mm -hmm. and only, it was too late. The church burnt down. And I remember afterwards, the firemen are investigating, because they always got to write the cause of the fire. And they're over there next to the W, where the WM room used yeah. to be, and the electric panel box there, and they're saying to themselves, amongst themselves, saying, I think it must have started in the electric panel box because, you know, probably shorted out. And I'm a little boy over here. And I'm saying, I'm nine years old. And I'm saying, yeah, yeah that's probably where it started, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you know, the, the, the interesting part here is, is um, <clears throat> the church burning down. My, uh, you know, my parents had to borrow another church, the Lutheran, Methodist, or whatever it was in town. Mm -hmm. And we borrowed their church. And in those days, we had altars, and, and there would be an altar call, and man, I made a beeline up for the altar, and I'm, I'm praying, I'm saying, dear God, I'm really sorry, I burnt your house down, please forgive me, and I'm looking around at the same time, is anybody listening to my prayer? God, you know that I really am sorry. And then I made a deal with God. Now, I did not ever tell my family for many, many years, but I made this deal God, with God. I said, God, I tell you what. You know, I really am sorry. If you want me to do anything, you just ask me, and I'll say yes. Yeah. Uh, the uh, he said something. He said, "I want you to be a missionary," and I'm saying, "I mean, you really seriously heard him?" I'm time. serious. I said, "Who? Me?" And he said, <laughs> "Yes, you." Me? And it was like, "Yes," and I'm saying, "Okay, yes, I will." And then I went to bed that night, okay. and I thought to myself, oh, Daryl, you just have a vivid imagination. Mm -hmm. God wouldn't want to use you. I mean, look, you just burned his house down. He wouldn't want to <laughs> use you. And so, I, and I remember out of the Bible the story of Gideon, mm -hmm. and he put out this fleece. And, you know, nowadays most people don't know what a yeah. fleece is. It's a piece of sheep's fur wool <laughs> that you put out on the ground. I mean, he put it out on the ground, and he said, God, make it wet, the ground dry, and I'll know that it's really what, because God asked Gideon to do something. He knew uh -huh. he'd get in trouble if he did it, because, but it was what God wanted him to do. So I said, God, I don't have any sheep's wool or anything, but <laughs> I'm going to put a fleece before you, and if you answer, then I'll know that you really mm -hmm. talk to me. So I, I thought, you know, I'm like I say, I'm like kind of ADD kind of kid, and I'm, and I'm thinking, okay, here's the deal. Now, maybe it wasn't the smartest thing to do, but I, I said, okay, God, I got this cat. Mitzi is her name. She's been pregnant for the longest time, and she's never, I mean, she's just not having her babies. And I said, God, if you make it so she has her babies tonight, I'll know it was really you. So I go to sleep that night. And I wake up in the morning, and my sister Cheryl comes over and says, Daryl, look, Mitzi's got her kittens. Look, eight of them. And I'm like, Oh Wait a minute, God. Now, that really wasn't really smart on my part to do. I mean, the cat's been pregnant. I should have said maybe <laughs> could she have puppies, and that would have been a miracle. <laughs> yeah, but I say, okay, God, let's go back and start this again. Now, Gideon, he did it two days in a row because uh -huh. the first day it was the ground. It had to be wet and the ground dry. Now, now let's, let's do this again, Lord, and let's do it a lot better test because, you know. So I said, God, here it is. Okay, there's this kid in school I really don't like. He doesn't like me. He's on the other side of the room. And I'll tell you what, have him come and ask me to borrow a pencil from me. And I said, that'll prove it. That's tough enough. You know, if that happens, then I'll know you really want me to be a missionary. So I go to class that day, and I just kind of keep my eyes on that kid over there. <laughs> Lunchtime comes. I have my lunch, and no problem. I like, whew, breathe in a sigh of relief. See, it was just my imagination. The school's over. The bell rings at 3 o'clock, and I'm keeping my eye on the watch. Uh -huh. He's not budged. He's over there. And we're all doing our work, and there's, and all of a sudden, 10 minutes till 3, he stands up from his seat, 
comes around like slow motion to the back of the room, come, walks straight over to me and says, Daryl, can I borrow a pencil? And I oh reach my for goodness. my pencil box, I open <laughs> it up and give him a pencil. Yeah, sure. <laughs> And I knew so that, was, that was so sealed in my heart. I mean, not only did I hear the God speak to me, but he also confirmed twice that that's what he wanted to be. So all through my teen years, I knew that's what I wanted to be. And um, my prayer was always, God, send me to where mm -hmm. I can be used the greatest and um, to do what you want me to do, and you're working through me. So now we're in Thailand. I mean, the Philippines. We were in Thailand yeah. 10 years. Oh, but... Okay, let's wrap, <laughs> fast forward this. Okay. Remember, I didn't tell anybody that I burnt right. the church down. <laughs> <sighs> About 10 years ago, uh, we had a family reunion after, you know, I've been a missionary for almost 30 uh -huh. years now. And a family reunion, all the family was together. My two sisters, my brother, and mom and dad Did were there. Did any of them know? Nobody you in my family knew. I, I never told them. I never told them. <laughs> uh, and, and my baby sister, who's no longer a baby, sitting next to me, and, and we're reminiscing some. And, and, and she all of a sudden, out of the blue, she says, do you remember when the church burned down? <laughs> and, and she's asking me. And I'm like, yeah, I, I started it. She said, <laughs> immediately her head just whips to dad at the end of the table. And she says, dad, did you know that Daryl started the fire that burnt the church down? And my dad looks straight at me and he says, you know, I always thought he did, but I never <laughs> asked him because I was afraid he'd lie on top of it. Wow. Smart dad, <laughs> smart dad. And because um, I'm sure I would. You probably have. would. <laughs> I wanted to live, you know. And so, you know, with that kind of a background, and now I've got... Uh, we work it with about, you know, four to five thousand children in the Philippines. I mean, that's every incredible, Daryl. Skipping from yeah. this to <laughs> that, God can take a child that's oh. ADHD or whatever. He designed us. He did. He created yeah. us. Each one of us are designed by God. We're not an accident. And sometimes we say, "But God couldn't use me enough." No, oh, no, no. He designed us to use us. You know. He just loves to use people that totally have to depend upon him. Exactly. It's, exactly. He loves that broken, the broken vessels. Yeah. <laughs> um, we work with kids, and my son answered the mission's call, and it, he, he had had his own call to come uh, be a missionary. And did you years. know it at the time that he had the call on his life? Yeah, too? but, you know, you can't force your children yeah, to do it. It's, it's exactly. between them and God. Mm -hmm. And for 10, 11 years, he did not answer the call with his wife. And they had business. They had great oper income operation. And, and there, was a, uh, there was a service we needed to do in Texas. And I asked my son and his wife if they'd go cover it for us mm -hmm. and just represent Family Circus. He said, sure, Dad. So he flew out, and as they were landing in Sa Dallas, Fort Worth, airport, there was a wind shear that took the plane, dropped it down within 30 feet of the runway, and at that wow. moment, both he and his wife had that flashback of their life, and God spoke to him and said, what have you done with the call, wow. with my call? And they both answered God and said, we have not answered the call. Whoa. And uh, he said, are you going to? Yes. They <laughs> said to God, both of them, individually talking to the, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit, they answered the call and they said they would. Now, so they went in and they were setting up the display table for Family uh -huh. Circus, and, and there was a missionary from Romania, a young man that had answered the call, but he had resisted, similar to my son. And God spoke to him and said, you go talk to this young missionary, or this young man, because he has resisted the call like you did, but I don't want happening to him what happened to you. Because he had, God had spoke to him daily for some time, and finally at the end he would not say yes to the Lord, and he had a terrible accident, was in a coma, I understand, for a year. Oh, During the time goodness. he was in a coma, the Holy Spirit, or Jesus, would visit him on a daily basis and said, are you ready yet to answer the call? The day that he said yes was the day he came out of the coma. That's incredible. Then yeah. he went to Rome, and he's doing a great work there. Wow. So he came over to my son, and he said, God told me to come over and talk to you. <coughs> Have you answered the call yet? And he said, well, this is out of the clear blue sky. Out of the blue. They don't know <laughs> either. They, they have no clue who each other oh is. My and, and my son says, well, we just answered the call on the airplane <laughs> flight here and gave him the background on it. He said, well, and he gave his story to my son. And he said, um, I want to encourage you. Answer the call. Don't do what I did. 
And he said, um, would you do me a favor? And my son said, sure, whatever. And he said, just, we, you've been setting up this nice display. Would you simply lean over the table, put your elbows on the table for a moment? So my son leaned forward, put his elbows on the table, and this young man stood behind him and kicked him in the rear end. <laughs> he said, now, now, my son's a big guy, redhead, and he would not normally take that from anybody. He said, now, I want that to be a reminder. Don't turn back. Wow. They Isn't sold everything, something? and his wife, Mary, was, mm -hmm. uh, um, was in tears one day because they were getting rid of a lot mm -hmm. of the precious things they had collected during their 10 years of, of uh, married, being married. And she said, why would God take away these precious things that he's blessed us with? And my son, you know, said, answered, he said, you know, God will never take away something that is precious to us without replacing it with something that is more valuable. Wow. And she had a UTI, and they mm -hmm. went to the doctor to have it checked out. And while at the, the doctor was examining them, he said, could you be pregnant? And they just laughed. They said, Doc, <laughs> you know, it's not possible. She has a toxic goiter, which gave her less than 2% chance of having a child. Oh, he my said, goodness. that's right, I forgot. And so they, they took the test. The doctor came back, and he said, um, yes, you have a UTI. Confirmed it, so here's the medicine. And by the way, you're pregnant. <laughs> The nurse, I mean, th they both <laughs> broke into tears. And the oh. nurse that was in the room said, don't they want a baby? And the doctor said, oh, if you knew this couple, they absolutely want a baby. So they came out to the mission field, uh -huh. had their child over there, which is our now our oldest grandchild, oh who is three years old. At the age of two, I taught him his first scripture verse. And uh, this little curly-headed boy, his name is like his father's, Dee Dee is a, the nickname that his father goes by and he <laughs> goes by. So it's little Dee Dee. Oh. A little Dee Dee would be in our circus tent listening to the scripture verses because there's, there's three things that are permanent or eternal. Uh -huh. And that's God. God's eternal. His word is eternal. And we are eternal. Those who trust and believe in Jesus Christ and those who don't are still eternal. We're eternal creatures. And so um, my grandson would listen to us memorizing the word of God. Now, realize that our brains are divided into two yeah. hemispheres. <laughs> one hemisphere controls and, and operates with the musical side of things. The other one is verbal. And when you combine those two and you're learning scripture, or anything for that matter, it sticks in your brain. So the first scripture verse I ta taught our grandson was Proverbs 15.1. Very few people <laughs> know that one by yeah. heart. But it goes like this. A gentle answer turns away wrath but harsh words stir up anger. So this is how I taught our grandson. It goes like this. A gentle answer turns away wrath. <laughs> A gentle answer turns away wrath. And of course you could guess the first word he got yes, was wrath. Of course, wrath. But anyway. Rap. <laughs> That's just By great. teaching God's word this way, it sticks in their hearts. Yeah. So um, we love it. And I know we're going to be sharing more, yes. and um, I've got a lot more stories to tell. Oh, well, can you tell one right now? It's sure. 17 years ago, a young lady was working on the street. She was probably 18 years old, right at it. And she was working on the street uh, between the hours, dark hours of 8 o'clock to 1 o'clock in the morning, and uh, taking to bed five, six guys a night. Wow. to help provide food for her and her family. And I'm saying her family being her parents. Uh -huh. Just her, uh, yeah, yeah, she didn't. She wasn't married, and uh, she didn't have any children, but she got pregnant during that time and decided at close to the end of the pregnancy that she could not and did not want to have a child. Mm -hmm. So she hired someone to give her what we call a street abortion. And in the process, the baby was born alive. Wow. I've known that little baby that she had, a little girl. I've known her since the, practically the time she was born. She was raised by the lady, I understand, who was also the one who tried to give her the abortion. And she said, and so she took the baby, the, the lady who tried mm -hmm. to kill the child, took the baby to raise it in her home and raised it as a slave. There was about nine children in that home. Oh my goodness. So the young girl, as she grew up, she would do the dishes and whatever she did, scraped off the dishes, that was hers to eat. Oh, you're kidding. That's all. 
Well, one thing that really drew her to me was when she was a year old, I saw her and, and, and the, the family that she, whose house she was living in said, she knows one of the, your favorite songs. And it's, it's the song that goes, J-E-S-U-S, -S, and I'd have all the kids repeat that mm -hmm. with me. And, and so I, I knelt down in front of this little one-year-old girl. Her stomach was bloated from malnutrition. Mm -hmm. She had a bald head because of lice and uh, head lice, and it was painted purple after being shaved full. So they tried to get rid of the lice. So she wasn't very attractive. But I, I knelt down in front of her, and I said, J-E-S. And I'm trying to get her to do it with me because uh -huh. they say she can do it. <coughs> and, and she just stares at me. She's like, I do it again. J E. S, U, S, nothing. But she then whispers to me and she says, Jesus. Oh. She had already connected the dots. At one year old, she was able to say, Jesus. So we watched her over the 17 years. And when she became about nine years old, we intervened in her life because she was loving the Lord so much and life was not very good for her. Oh. And uh, she had to do the laundry for the household. She had to do the dishes and all those kind of chores. And then she still was able to go to school as long as she got everything else done. Government school oh is free goodness. over there. So we asked the family, could we take that young girl? Mm -hmm. And that's a picture of her. Can we get a picture of her? Okay. This is we just took that young girl, girl into our home and uh, we put her into school. But before, before we took her, the family that she lived with said to her, you have to remember when you are older and you have a job, you must pay us back for every bit of food that you have eaten in our house. But that food was scraped off the... They were serious. Oh my and word. And she understood they were serious. Mm -hmm. She just graduated this last year at 17. And I asked her, I said, what do you want to do with your life? She says, I want to go to Bible school. Wow. Dad, I want to go to Bible school. Wow. You know, and, and we can repeat this story with hundreds <coughs> and thousands of other children. Some of them didn't live as long as she did. Right. But when you invest in the life of the child, children are the most important people in heaven. Yeah, they are. And it's just a treasure to be able to help kids mm -hmm. come to know Jesus. Well, I'll tell you what, Daryl, you have... Like I said, a lot of stories to tell. So we're going to hear the rest of the story next week. But uh, thank you for sharing so much with us already. Um, what a blessing that God has, has used you in such a way. Like you said, you felt, God, who could, how could you use yeah. me? Yeah. But God, that just goes yeah. to show that God can use anybody. Well, as we're, we're closing, I just want to share a little bit about my books. Uh, the first book is Angels on Assignment, and you mentioned that you had the opportunity to meet my dad, yes. and uh, we're blessed by, yeah. by his life also. And uh, he had 27 visits over a period of a year and a half, and nothing that's not already in God's Word, as you know, but just a revelation, an illumination of the heart of the Father. I'm looking and forward to rereading that. Yeah. I really want to. And my second book is The Man Who Talked with the Angels, and that book is the last nine visits that weren't in the first book. There were 18 visits in the first book, the last book. La this book has the last nine, including a visit with Jesus that is precious, and talks about the fact that there's hosts of heaven all over the world, including, including South America, where you are. <laughs> yes, try the Philippines, too. Try the Philippines, yes. <laughs> right. They're all over yeah. the world, and they yeah. look just a lot like people that yes. they're helping. Yeah. And they're helping the work, as he said, mm -hmm. that the angel at that point told my dad he wants, wanted people to know that if they were working uh, for the kingdom, they weren't alone. Yeah. There was a host of heaven yeah. working with them. And you've seen that mm -hmm. in action. Oh, Did you share? Really. We'll share that next time. Yes. And then, oops, I spilled the coffee again. Title of this book, I Can't Walk and Talk and Chew Gum at the Same Time. <laughs> I get it. I used to, my name was Trouble, too. <laughs> Partly because I was just so interested in everything and, and, and couldn't stop yakking. But God loved me anyway, and he Amen. let me have the opportunity to share, share his goodness like you have had the opportunity. But what a blessing. God is just real, isn't he? 
And so. Vera, would you just like to say something to anybody that's, that's watching as we're closing? I'd like to say it doesn't matter who you are and what you think about yourself. God designed you while you were yet in your mother's mm -hmm. womb. He has a wonderful plan for your life. Find out what God wants you to do and do it with all your heart and all your love and you'll have the most joyful life you could ever possibly imagine. No exceptions. Fantastic. And that's the truth. That is yeah. the truth. Well, I wanted you to invite us to come and see us at Central Assembly Christian Life Center. Uh, we would just love to put our, our, our hands in your hand. We would love to let you know uh, who God is. We would just, if you're lonely, we have a spot for you. We have people that would just love to, they, their whole purpose is to heal the brokenhearted and, and bring, bring you new life. And also, we'd like to invite you to our Bible study. We have it every Tuesday, and it's just, we, I'll tell you what, Daryl, we have seen gals' lives changed yes. in this Bible oh, study. Yes. And when you get together with a group of ladies, there's power. There's girl <laughs> yes, power, yes, and girl yes, woman yes. power, and it's, it's yes, powerful. Yes. <laughs> and we've seen people healed and mm. lives changed. Praise God. And it's just been a blessing. So come and see us at, at that time. And, and, and we also have him coming up, a Harvest Blast on the 31st of October. You won't want to miss that. It's a Wednesday night. And they have all sorts of stuff, so games, and it's kid time. Yes. And I know you're a kid. <laughs> yeah. And that these, this is especially for kids, and we want to see you come to that. Well, thank you so much for watching. I'll tell you what, it's a wonderful time when God can move and uh, how God has used you, Daryl. Yes. What a blessing. You won't want to miss next week. Amen. Uh, you've got to, you've got to t tell your kids to come. <laughs> and yes, get in front of this. Yes. He's going to share some stories, yep. some kid yep. stuff. Kids will and, even enjoy it. And I'll tell you what, God is on the yeah. throne. Thank you so much for coming, Daryl. You're and welcome. Tune in again next week. Don't miss it. God bless you, and goodbye. Daryl. For A